Good morning. What a joy to be with you this day in support of Dr. Michelle and Reverend Josh and this wonderful Mile High Miracle, Mile High Magic. So lovely to be with you all. And uh, I was so excited to, to see what a great adventure in faith is planned. But what really jazzed me in the announcements was that Beyond Limits starts this week. And I just got to tell you, in my term here, my, not my term, my uh, time here, <laughs> it's not, it wasn't a life sentence or anything like that. In my time here, uh, I, I saw thousands of lives transformed by that course. People would come here, they would drink in, they get a sense and a taste of, of this, this life-changing teaching, and, and then they would get into the classes and they would anchor it and they would do inner healing work. And then everything would open up in their lives. And I, I just love it. And so I just want to be a voice to encourage you to uh, sign up for that. If you've never done it, if you're ready for a refresher or any of the other fine advanced courses, uh, just invite you uh, absolutely to not miss this opportunity uh, because it's the best thing since sliced bread and it's good, good, good stuff. All right. Our topic today is faith in the way things are, part one. Every once in a while, uh, a ray of light through uh, a sacred passage, a spiritual passage, uh, can come our way. And recently one did for me. Uh, it's attributed to Lao Tzu. And around Lao Tzu, the spiritual path of Taoism grew, his ancient teachings and those of his followers. And so I want to share a passage from the Tao, from the Stephen Mitchell uh, translation of the Tao. Be content with what you have. Have faith in the way things are. When you realize that nothing is lacking, the whole world belongs to you. So I invite us to ponder that today, throughout the week. And I'm going to address it even further next Sunday. The possibility of what it would be like to live having faith in that which is. Faith in the way things are. Now, from the very get-go, I want to tell you that faith in the way things are has a partner, and that is faith in who you are. They're partners. Now, we all know that things come along in our life, challenges uh, come along in our lives, and, and we're constantly called to remind ourselves of who we really are. Uh, it's like every challenge, every experience comes to us and says, you know, just who do you think you are in the face of this? You know? And we get to decide. Who am I in relationship to this that I'm embracing in my life? So it's a very important if we're going to have faith in the way things are is to continually uplift our faith in who we are. And there's a practice for that that I'm going to stress today and next week as well, a three-part practice. It's about wake up, heal up, and open up. Wake up, heal up, and open up. You might notice that those first letters of those phrases spell who, which is a coincidence, I'm sure. Uh, but so, so we get to uh, wake up. It's important to wake up, continually wake up to the creative power we have in terms of how we assess things, how we name things, how we judge things, our perceptions, to wake up to that because they're either empowering us or chaining us taking us down or lifting us up, to wake up to that creative power and where has my mind been going? Where have my thoughts been going? What have, how have I framed a certain person or situation in my life? Wake up to that. Don't be asleep to that because it's too powerful to fall asleep to that. And having awakened, then we can heal up. We can move ourselves out of fear, out of a sense of separation from our good, from our God, from one another, separation from answers or possibilities, and we can heal and open our hearts again. And then that leads us to the ability to open up, to open up to the creative power latent within every one of us, no matter what our path has been, and then also open up to the infinite possibilities that are always around us and for us. To wake up, to heal up, to open up is to continually anchor in a faith in who we are, that we might then embrace the world with a faith in the way things are. So, from the get-go, I think it's important to accept that things are the way they are. Now, that seems radically obvious, but, you know, many people struggle to have faith in the way things are, and in that, they then want 
things to be different than the way they are. Now, I think that's a natural thing, and we can have some compassion for it, but where does that put us in terms of who we are and what life can be? What it really tends to lead to is that we are constantly resenting what is, constantly resisting it, uh, constantly struggling with that which is. And as we do that over and over, we become people of complaint rather than creativity. We get locked into victimhood in our life, to a kind of limitation paradigm, and ultimately into discouragement uh, in our lives. And, and really, why is all of this? It's because we harbor a secret fear. And the fear is that people and situations have more power in my life than I do. We fear that we don't have access to true power and thus other things are running our lives. And so then we rail against the way things are, the way people are, wishing it would all be different according to that which makes us feel better or more comfortable. Now, uh, the greatest metaphysician ever, Jesus, he said there's a couple of secrets to this, to your freedom and empowerment. First of all, judge not and resist not. He said, don't judge because you create your own personal prison via your judgments. Your own judgments are a prison. And don't resist because you're giving power to what you resist. And he said, there's a kingdom of heaven, a kingdom of spiritual empowerment within you. Go there. And then you don't have to make the world wrong. You can bring some light to it instead. So imagine what it would be like to move out of contention with things in your life or in the world, out of contention with people and situations, and instead to bring a new faith in who you are as well as a faith in the way things are to the creative process of your life. Imagine that. It could be a breakthrough. We'll talk more about that. I want to leave you today with five keys uh, that are a part of waking up opening up healing in our life. And the first key is people and circumstances only have the power we give them. All right? So inevitably, we give power to people and situations, but it's our perception of the people and the situations that has the real power impact in our life. We think it's the situation, the person, whatever it is, but it's actually the web we weave via our perception of the power that they wield. I mean, for instance, let's say you're stuck in heavy traffic. <laughs> now you've got choices as to your personal reality. And don't sit there looking pious at me. You know this is, <laughs> this is high-level spiritual situations for us, right? You have the opportunity to let it make you nervous, frustrated, anxious, tight, angry, and all of that. And in choosing that, we think the traffic is doing it to me. But of course we know it's not. That's our relationship to the situation, and it has an immediate manifestation. It affects mind and emotions. Our blood pressure goes up, it affects the body, and, and then who knows? Um, not only that, we might be impulsive and do something stupid and then all of that because of the perception of the situation. Well, we do have the option to shift that perception and to accept it as it is. We may say, I wish it were different, but I accept this as it is and then reassure ourselves that, you know, I, I accept the universe puts me where I need to be when I need to be there. And, and I accept that I'm going to be where I need to be when I need to be. All right, and, and maybe this is helping me avoid a deeper problem, an accident or something like that. I know of a person who whenever they're in a line or whenever they have to wait, their personal practice is to do blessings for people. They just call up people they know, they loved ones or people that are struggling or challenging, they just send blessings and they use that time for that. I mean, we have these options. We have options. Love the story of the guy who was stuck in heavy traffic and the light turned green and his car died. And he tried everything he could do to get the thing started, and it wouldn't start. And then the chorus of honking started. The car right behind him and many cars behind them. And they kept honking and honking. He kept trying. Finally, he got out of the car, and he went to the car behind him. He says, you know what? 
Um, would you go up and try to start my car? And I'll just honk here for you. you know? <laughs> You know, there are many creative, creative opportunities, but when we have faith in the way things are, then we ask, what is the greater good that is available to me here that I'm just not seeing? We get to wake up to what we're doing within ourselves, heal up, and then open up to what's possible. The second key is that the universe is always working on our behalf, even when we don't know it. And I think that's such a lovely and a beautiful realization that the universe wants to promote its greater intelligence, its livingness, and its options through us. That there's a force for good at work in our lives. And I know that the reason it sometimes doesn't think that way, feel that way, is that very often we are rejecting or neglecting or denying it, and we're looking so much at what's going on and giving it so much power, we block that greater good that would just love to inspire us, guide us, uh, be a miracle power in our lives for us. The good of God cannot be blocked except by our rejection of it, our blocking of it, our neglect of that. Sense that, that there's a power that wants you to thrive, that wants to supply you with answers you don't even know yet, that wants to guide you that wants you to be an instrument for manifesting greater possibility in life. Uh, Erica and I, about a dozen years ago, decided to sign up for a very powerful spiritual con uh, conference to be held in a place we'd never been, an island in Fiji, of all places. And uh, we decided, well, if we're going to go that far, let's go six days early and just have a kind of relaxing time, a little vacation, and then we'll um, do the retreat. So... To go to Fiji, you have to fly out of L.A., over, and it's usually a late-night flight uh, overnight. So we had a flight from Denver to L.A., and uh, that flight got delayed, severely delayed, such that when we arrived in L.A. and got to the international desk to, to get on our flight, we were 15 minutes late. And though the plane was out on the tarmac, they wouldn't bring it back. And then we learned that they only fly to Fiji every other day. <laughs> and now we were taking all that in, and then there was a newly married couple in the same plight as us, and the bride and groom. And the bride was going ballistic. She was screaming and yelling and threatening. And they called security um, on this precious gal. She was probably just overloaded with all the stress of, of getting married and bridesmaids and a groom and you know, all this stuff. Um, she got so flustered, she just collapsed down on the floor uh, and sobbed. <laughs> So we just went up to the desk, and I said, well, I guess we're not flying out tonight. She said, right. And she said, we're going to put you up because it's our fault. And I said, well, that's great. And so she showed me a list of hotels in the area for two, a two-night stay. And I've, I've been to a lot of meetings uh, near the airport in L.A., and I recognized one. I said, I like that hotel, Erica. Let's go there. So they booked us there. And so we went there, and they were given a special room. It was very nice, kind of like a suite. And uh, so we ordered up a little late night dinner and we had a wonderful talk and we slept well, we slept late. The next day we took a long walk, then we went to the spa, we had another lovely dinner and we slept like just, just fabulous. And then the next day we got on the flight and we looked at each other and said, you know, this couldn't have been more perfect. We arrived fresher and it was a four day stay rather than six, but there was a perfection. We really are so glad it worked out that way. You know, and so for me it's a... Um, now, I know there are times in my life I could have been that, that young lady crying on the floor or raising a ruckus, but, you know, uh, we have that opportunity to wake up. What am I doing with the situation at hand? That's my creation. What am I doing? Wake up to that and, and also to the greater power to shift it. And then do some healing work. Perfect love casts out fear, so I move my heart into love and I, I move out of fear and separation and a sense of domination by the situation. And then I'm ready to open up to the creative process and to possibilities I can only imagine. But I'll get to enjoy. Wake up, heal up, and open up to the greater good. Now the third key in all of this is having faith in the way things are places you in a power zone. And this is such a cool thing, that if we, with great compassion, can look at how we overreact or how we tend to put the, the most negative frame around things and say, wait a minute, I'm capable of more. I'm going to wake up to this. 
And I'm going to know that right in the midst of what seems like negation is a possibility just waiting for someone to call it forth, to acknowledge it, and to let it come forth. And so, so we have that opportunity in that power zone to, to shift out of lack and not enoughness and, and into the presence of a, an as yet invisible but real possibility. No situation can block the greater possibilities of life and of the divine. And so we place ourselves in a power zone. And what I love whenever I place myself in that zone is then the machinery of the universe takes over in a, a miraculous way, it seems. It's like things start moving you. You find yourself by just deciding to have faith in the way things are because you have faith in the way in who you are and faith in the possibility just yearning to come forth that things begin to flow. You're in a flow. And, and, and then things can start getting put together. There's a weaving that goes on by this massive intelli infinite intelligence we're a part of that brings forth things in a way we could never have orchestrated ourselves. But we get to be participants in this when we get out of the way and we yield. Now, now I want you to be clear here. In having faith in the way things are, I'm not suggesting that this is a passive way of living, you know, passivity or complacency. It's not that at all. But what we're doing is we're going from fighting actualities to courting possibilities. Do you see the big difference in that in life? So many times we're fighting what is. We're fighting what is rather than courting what can be. We've got to make the choice. What am I going to be about? We place ourselves in that power zone and in serendipity, discovering greater good like we did in that hotel or that whole Fiji trip than we could have ever designed. But we were available to it. The universe could work with us in that. Think of Alexander Fleming, the great scientist, and he was given this project of working with soil samples to create kind of bacteria that could support um, fertility in the soil and crops. And one of his samples became molded. There's this golden mold all over it. And most would have said, well, that didn't work. That's a, that's a failure. But he got kind of intrigued by it. And he explored it only to discover something he wasn't looking for. Penicillin, which has made a huge difference in our journey. Now, he could have thrown it out, just like so many times we'd love to throw out aspects of life that come our way. But he dived into it. And something took him over. Let me tell you about a police officer uh, named Terrell Potter. He was a police officer in a small town in Alabama. And during his tenure there, he arrested a young lady named Jocelyn James, not once, but several times. She was addicted, drug addicted, and she was a dealer as well. In fact, in the span of years from 2007 to 2012, she was arrested 16 times. Now, he sort of lost track with her. He had in several interactions with her, and he lost track with her. Unbeknownst to him, to Officer Potter, during her final stay in prison, she had a transformational experience, a spiritual experience. She got sober and clean, and she then got out of prison and not only kept her life on, on the upswing, but then she created a nonprofit uh, called The Grace Place, Place of Grace, The Place of Grace, to help women get treatment. Now... Fast forward some years to 2019, November of 2019, Officer Potter is told by his physician that we have to remove one of your kidneys. Uh, it's not working, and you need a replacement because your other kidney isn't strong enough to carry the whole load. The challenge is, is that there's a seven to eight year waiting list for transplants that we know of. So with that sobering news, uh, Potter and his wife started putting the word out in, in, in the whole southeastern United States, looking for a candidate, looking for a donor of a kidney. Um, and uh, they put it into their prayer work as well. They didn't realize that just two miles away, Jocelyn was going through her Facebook feed one day, and she saw the call for a kidney for a police officer named Terrell Potter. She thought, I think... He's the one that arrested me several times. <laughs> and then inspiration hit her and she says, I believe I've got his kidney. She got tested. She was a match. 
July 12th of last year, she successfully gave one of her kidneys to Officer Potter, whom she openly acknowledged as an angel in her life, helping her to that time of transformation. And in turn, she became an angel in his life. Now, you can't create stuff like that, <laughs> except maybe in Hollywood, but in reality, it's that there's this this weaving together when we put ourselves in the power zone. But you're not going to get there detesting and railing and complaining against what is. You get there when you transcend what is. And we all have that capacity. So the fourth key. Adversity is a university of transformation. In the midst of even the bleakest times, covid Ecological decay on our planet. We get to open up to what wants to transform. Personally in our consciousness. And collectively in our consciousness. And we really attend to that. We enroll in that. We don't run away from it. We don't move to the sideline and cluck our tongues and criticize. We enroll. We enroll in the growth process, the classroom of transformation, even in the bleakest of times, something will grow us. I'm thinking of my beloved wife. She's here somewhere. Um, in 1985, and many of you know this, she lost her first husband to leukemia. And there she was with our beloved three-year-old and six-year-old, our boys, who were then three and six. And she has to go alone pretty bleak. So for the next two years, she stabilizes things as she quietly grieves and seeks to keep her boys happy and strong. But then at the end of that two years, something in her said, okay, now it's time for you to take a leap. Leave the comfortable confines of friendships that are part of an old chapter and a place that's part of an old chapter and explore your greater yet to be. And she'd been studying some metaphysics and watching Oprah and things like that on her own. So she always loved Denver, and uh, she decided that since she had an aunt here, she'd explore living and moving to Denver. Now here's a single woman with a three and a six-year-old, who at that time would then became a five and an eight-year-old, and she uprooted and moved here. And uh, in, in wonderful ways that it's too long a story to tell, she was told about Mile High Church, and she, in her second week here, she attended. And her second time she attended, we met. And last month, we celebrated our 33rd anniversary. Thank you. I applaud it as well, because you can't figure those things out, but a greater mind can. Adversity is a university of transformation. If we'll wake up, heal up, and open up, God bless her, she did all of that. All of that. Abraham Maslow wrote, in any given moment, we have two options. To step forward into growth or step backward into safety. So in adversity, we get to grow and transform. The final key, faith in the way things are is masterful living. That's the bottom line. This is an approach that grows us into mastery, into expressing our divine birthright on this planet. We're here to, to evolve our consciousness. We're here to look at what consciousness is doing in our lives and in the world. And rather than resist those byproducts, we get to transform our consciousness. And so we cease our warring against what is and we start equipping ourselves to be the avenues for that which can be. We don't stick our head in the sand and say things aren't challenged in our life or in the world, but we know what we are called to do and we know the effective thing to do. And that's what we get to do. Now, I declare that you wouldn't be here if you weren't a budding master. And I pray that you'll accept that, that you'll know who you are beyond your, your uh, judgments of your path or what's present in your life that you'll know that if you're interested in this kind of teaching, you're on a path of mastery. Not superiority over others, but mastery. 
meaning you are taking the reins of your consciousness and you are cooperating with the divine to grow you and to allow you to be the means by which life evolves life. You're fulfilling your calling. Who knows but that thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. It's probable that you signed up to be here to not only work on you and grow you, but to be a part of us, not just cowering or yelling at what's going on, but taking it on and bringing forth higher possibilities, building the peace we want, taking care of our beloved, precious Mother Earth, building bridges, bringing forth the kingdom, the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. These words by Wayne Dyer, peace is the result of retraining your mind to process life as it is rather than as you think it should be. My invitation is ponder this this week. Look at how you can wake up to your immense creativity and your experience. Heal up. Move out of the fear and the resistance and the separation that you might then open up to shine your light and to bring forth great and wondrous things. Remember those words from the Tao. Be content with what you have. Have faith in the way things are. When you realize that nothing is lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Let's take this into prayer. Ah, so supports me to know this, remember this. We all get concerned for our life, for the world. Where shall that take us? May it take us not to our judgments and our anger. They're wishing it weren't. As we breathe deeply and quiet our minds, may it take us to our hearts. And as we allow our hearts to open, may we remember who we are and ever shall be. Luminous light beings, conduits, for the spirit, activities of the spirit, inventors and creators of new realities, healers, light keepers, every one of us. And therefore we step into the power zone of deliberately, boldly, and humbly owning our ability to shape a consciousness that contains the answers. So we give thanks for this realization of the mighty action of the living spirit in our minds, our emotions, our bodies. We no longer feel intimidated by problems, situations, conditions in our life or in the world. We have faith that even in the midst of them, there's something that can come forth, a higher order of life and intelligence. And we accept this with great joy, feeling the sense of freedom, sensing the beckoning to our greater good. Excited. Excited and thrilled to see the wonder-working power as we affirm the reality of higher good, no matter what, anywhere and everywhere, especially within us. May we sense ourselves waking up again and again to the sanctity and the creativity of our consciousness, healing up, no longer fear-based beings, cowering before situations. but moving into a higher space of love and truth that we might then open up. We feel ourselves opening up, letting our, our awareness soar, our consciousness expand, the welcome mat out for higher ideas, greater possibilities, and healing energies. We affirm that they are active now within us, 
And we're not doing this by our own might or forcing. We're allowing this power to work in, through, and as us. So I affirm that in this consciousness, breakthroughs attend every one of our lives. I affirm that peace is available everywhere upon our planet. That a higher bandwidth of awareness can allow us to build bridges to bring healing energies to our precious Mother Earth to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in the mind of God. And it is through us that this shall happen. So I affirm our good here and now and always. We give thanks for it and wait with great anticipation for the wonder-working power of God in our lives and in our world. And for this we stand in, in total resolute commitment. Thank you, Spirit. And we let this go into its creative action. It's alive and real within us and evolving around us. Thank you, Spirit. We're very, very grateful for the truth that sets us free. Together we declare, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are. Amen.